In this video, we're going to do five practice problems. We'll take the chemical formulas for compounds that contain transition metals and we'll write names for them. Now, the transition metals are the elements in this part of the periodic table here, and I've written in some of the most common. I'm also going to be talking about some of the metals over here, which are not technically transition metals, but act a lot like the transition metals in certain ways. Now, when we write the names for formulas that contain transition metals, those names often have Roman numerals in them, and we've got to figure out what Roman numeral to put there. So we'll get really good at that here. Now, if you need a little background before you get started with this video, I'd recommend you check out my video, Naming Ionic Compounds with Transition Metals Introduction, and also have a look at my videos on writing ionic formulas. If you're all good with that background, let's get started. Here's our first example, CrBr2. So Cr here is chromium, it's a transition metal, and like many transition metals, chromium can make a variety of ions with different charges. Chromium can make three ions. It can make Cr2+, Cr3+, and Cr6+. So when we name this compound, we have to figure out what charge chromium has here. It could be 2+, 3+, or 6+. Here's how we figure it out. The first thing we're going to do is we focus in on the ion with a definite charge. The ion that can only have one charge that doesn't change. And here, that's Br. Br is in this column, this uh, one minus column, which means that in an ionic compound, Br always has a charge of one minus. Now, how much total negative charge do we have here? Well, there's this two after Br, which means that we have two Brs in this compound. So let me write another one in. And each one of these Brs has a charge of one minus. So that means that the total negative charge here is two minus. Okay, that's negative charge. What about positive charge? Well, in an ionic compound, you always have to have the, uh, the positive and the negative charge balanced out. So that means that if we have two minus here, we have to have two plus over here because they balance. Now, now we can figure out the charge on chromium. We have one chromium in here. There's no number after this, which means that we just have one. Chromium is our positive ion, and we have two plus of positive charge. So that means that this one chromium ion has to hold all of this positive charge, because we only have one of them. So that means the charge on chromium is two plus. So we have one chromium two plus, which gives us two plus of charge which is balanced out by two minus of charge that is contributed by two Br minuses. So that means the charge on chromium is two plus, and we can call this compound chromium. Now we need to say what its charge is, and we do this using Roman numerals in parentheses. So it's Cr2 plus, so we're gonna use the Roman numerals for two. So there's the two. And now what do we call Br here? Well, the negative ion, Br minus, is called bromi, bromide. The neutral compound is called bromine. And so when it becomes a negative ion, we change the ending to IDE. So the neutral version is bromine, and that changes to bromide. So this is going to be chromium 2 bromide. Just a quick word of advice. Don't be confused with this two. Some students think that it's the number that should come after chromium here, but that's not true. The two refers to the charge on chromium. Let's look at a few more examples. Okay, Au2S. So Au here is gold. And gold is able to make two different types of ions. Gold can make Au plus and Au3 plus. So we got to figure out what charge this Au has. We'll focus in on S. S is in this column of the periodic table, which means that it always has a charge of two minus. So here we got S, two minus. Now there's only one S. 
there's no number after that S. So that means that our total negative charge in the compound is two minus from this one S two minus here. Now for the positive charge, the positive and the negative has to balance. So that means that over on this side, we have to have two plus of positive charge. Now, what's the charge on gold on AU? Well, this two tells us that we have two gold ions in the compound. Here's one, here's the other. And this two plus is distributed between these two ions. So that means that each one, since we have two of them, is gonna be AU one plus. So now we have two AU one pluses, give us two plus of total positive charge, balanced out by two minus of negative charge from our S two minus. So we figured out in this case that our charge on gold is one plus. So we're gonna call this gold, and then we'll use the Roman numerals, gold one in parentheses. And for S, when S is a negative ion, S two minus, we call it sulfide. As a neutral element, it's called sulfur, and then we add that IDE to the end of it when it becomes a negative ion. So again, this one here in parentheses refers to the charge on gold. It doesn't have anything to do with the number after gold. All right, let's do a couple more. CO3N2. So CO here is cobalt, and cobalt can make two different ions. It can make a CO2 plus ion and a CO3 plus ion. What is its charge here? Let's figure out. We'll focus in on N, which is in this column here, which means that its charge in an ionic compound is always N three minus. Now, what's the total negative charge here? Well, this is N two, which means that we have two of these, so I'll add an extra one. Now we have two. And this means that our total negative charge is three minus plus three minus, which gives us six minus. Now, for the positive charge, the positive and the negative has to balance out, so that means that we have a total of six plus over here. Now for cobalt, CO, we have three of them. Let me draw them in here. One, two, three. So how are we gonna divide up this six plus amongst the three cobalts? We'll do it so that each one of them has two plus of charge. And that means that in this chemical compound, cobalt has a charge of two plus. So for naming it, we'll call it cobalt, Roman numerals here, parentheses two, because that's its charge here. And finally, N3 minus, we call that nitride. The neutral element is called nitrogen, and then we add that IDE, cobalt two nitride. Let's do a couple more. These might be a little bit more challenging, so it's probably worth checking them out. ZNO. All right, this is kind of a trick question, actually, because ZN is one of the few transition metals that can only make one type of ion. It always makes a two plus ion. Because there's only one possible ion, we don't need to use those Roman numerals in the parentheses. So we just call this zinc oxide. We don't call it zinc two oxide. Now, there's one other element on the periodic table that's a transition metal that only makes one type of ion, and that is silver, which always makes Ag one plus. So if you're naming a compound that contains zinc or silver, even though they're transition metals, you don't need to use the Roman numerals because they can only make one type of ion. Now, so far in all of our examples, the negative ion has been a single element, bromide or sulfide or nitride. But it's also possible for transition metals to form compounds with polyatomic ions, which are groups of atoms that together have a charge. So I want to do one example where we have to figure out the charge on a transition metal that's in a compound with one of these polyatomic ions. Here's our last one. V, then parentheses, CO3, two. So the V here is vanadium, which is a transition metal that's able to make four different types of ions, two plus, three plus, four plus, and five plus. 
Now, the CO3 here is a polyatomic ion. It's the polyatomic ion carbonate. So, how did I know that? Well, obviously I wrote the question. But this is a good example of when it makes sense for you to learn the polyatomic ions, so that if you see them in a problem like this, you can just recognize them right away. So, to figure out the charge on vanadium, we need to focus in first on carbonate, our negative ion. So carbonate, CO3, has a charge of two minus. Okay, CO3, two minus. These parentheses and the two outside tell us that we have two of these carbonates. So let me write another one in here. CO3, two minus. And that means that for total negative charge here, we have four minus. Now that four minus has to be balanced out by four plus of positive charge. And that positive charge is gonna end up on this vanadium. There is only one of them. There's no number after it, so there's just one. So that means that this vanadium has to hold all of the positive charge. So it's vanadium four plus. So we're gonna call this compound vanadium. Now the Roman numeral for four might be a little bit unfamiliar to you. It's IV. It's a good idea to memorize the Roman numerals at least up to seven, which is probably like the highest ion you're ever gonna see. So vanadium IV for four, and then as we said, this ion, uh, CO3 two minus, is carbonate. So the name of this compound is vanadium four carbonate. This four is a charge on vanadium. So that is how we take the formula for a compound that contains transition metals and how we write a name for it complete with these Roman numerals.